Kara here from Healing Humanity, the power of a proper human diet. And today I'm going to give you my five go-to carnivore meals that have gotten me through this first year on carnivore. And if you stay tuned until the end, I'm going to add on a bonus six one that I think is really the biggest game changer for me and my family. The purpose of this video is to help you through carnivore diet. A lot of people struggle and these are genuinely the five most prevalent, most popular, most helpful meals that have gotten me through my first year on carnivore. Today's video is brought to you by ButcherBox. Huge shout out to them. I've done a video with them in the past. They have grass-fed, grass-finished beef. You can get delivered right to your door. It's a subscription service. It's regeneratively raised, responsibly raised meat. They have all sorts of different types of meat. We're gonna talk about that a little bit more in today's video. But first, let's get started with number five, eggs nutritionally dense. They have everything you need. You can make eggs a million different ways. It doesn't have to be just so boring that you're only eating eggs, but my body craves eggs. One of the things I do kind of weird is I don't like the whites. I like the yolks. That's where all the fat is. That's where the good stuff is, but everybody's different. I will actually make fried eggs and I will remove uh, the white part. So I just have the yolk left and I'll crisp up the yolk in some beef tallow. Maybe add a little bit of butter at the end. You get little crispy egg yolks. They're fantastic. Scrambled eggs is a go-to. One of the things I recently did with the girls here was um, I did omelets, but I left them flat instead of rolling them up. Pizzas, breakfast pizzas. So it's just a flat piece. That's your crust. It's just the omelet flat. I put some ground beef on the top, some bacon, and a little bit of shredded cheese, and you have yourself a breakfast pizza. Of course, you have hard-boiled eggs. It's always great to have those in the fridge as a go-to. Scrambled eggs, hard-boiled eggs, fried eggs. You can switch it up. People say, don't you get bored of eggs? And I'm like, there's a million different ways to prepare them. In my mind, that's like a million different foods. So that's number five is eggs every single day. Huge batch of scrambled eggs. You got to get in that routine. If you if you have a routine, carnivore is a lot easier. Eggs were five. Number four, I'm going to go backwards. I'm going to get you down to number one and then that bonus one I, I mentioned. Power Bowl, Power Bowl, Power Bowl. I've talked about this before on the channel. It's been a while. What is a Power Bowl in case you're new here? Well, I'll make it quick. A Power Bowl is everything the good doctors tell us. Like, what should you eat on carnivore? Most of them, like Dr. Barry, I've heard him say many times, BBBE, beef, butter, bacon, eggs. Well, I think he was talking, have a little bit of beef here one day, have some eggs here for breakfast, um, have a little bit of butter, beef, butter, bacon, eggs. Well, I mixed all of those together into what we call in my household, the Power Bowl. And you can't say it just once. You have to say Power Bowl, Power Bowl, Power Bowl. It's incredible. It's so good. So here's what I do. I get a huge cast iron skillet. I cook the bacon in there first and I slice it into like two inch pieces. You get the bacon cooked up really cook, really good and then you remove it. Um, you save your bacon grease. You keep some of it in the pan, but leaving all of it in might be a little bit too much. In a separate pan, preferably cast iron, you cook up your ground beef. And I like cooking my ground beef and getting it nice and crispy. I'll add a little bit of butter at the end. You leave some of that fat in there. You got a good fat ratio to protein. Then I scramble up a bunch of eggs. I put the scrambled eggs in the bacon grease in the large cast iron skillet that the bacon was in. Get the eggs cooked nice. Then you incorporate everything, including butter. I like to use the Kerrygold butter. So then you have the eggs, you put the bacon back in it that you already cooked, you put the ground beef that's in the other pan, you put some butter, you stir it all up, you got this egg scramble power bowl and just listen, trust me, just trust me. You eat that and your body will be like, yes, thank you, finally, that's what I wanted. You cannot eat a Power Bowl and not have a smile on your face. You cannot eat a Power Bowl and not feel satiated. You just, you feel amazing after eating a Power Bowl, but it's delicious cold. In fact, when we went to film Dr. Barry, Jen made me up a huge batch. I had three containers of this. I brought it with. I ate it cold on the car ride and I, it was fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. All right, number three. And now keep this in mind, what I'm listing here right now, everyone's like carnivore is so expensive. We're talking about eggs. The second one, we're talking about eggs, ground beef, bacon. Bacon get a little expensive and butter. Number three, ground beef revolution. This one took me a long time. In my early stages of carnivore, I rarely had ground beef. I would have patties and burgers, but just eating straight up ground beef, ugh, it's gross. I don't like the texture. It's kind of rubbery. My latter half of carnivore, I've been on it for well over a year now. I would say the last four months, almost every single day. For breakfast, almost every single day. I love scrambled eggs and ground beef for breakfast. Took a little while to get it going, but it's all about how you prepare it and the texture. You can cook ground beef and it's done, but it, it could be these big chunks and the rubbery and they're just, they're not palatable. I don't like that. How I cook my ground beef, cast iron skillet. 
I have a wood, uh, what do you call it, spatula, spoon, and you can chop it up and you can get the ground beef really fine. I get it in there and I cook it for a while till it gets nice and crispy. It is the consistency of like a smash burger. Who doesn't love a smash burger? The edges of a smash burger, they're kind of crispy. Uh, they're delicious. You eat that with your scrambled eggs. It is absolutely fantastic. It's inexpensive and it gives you what you need. That's what is important. There's other cuts of meat that are delicious. Filet mignon, who doesn't like filet mignon? Doesn't have the fat. Ground beef, you got that fat. And then you add the kick of butter at the end. I'm telling you what, I look forward to it every day. I'm thankful, grateful, blessed. I eat ground beef every single day. It's one of my favorites. Number four, bacon. Bacon, bacon, bacon. I know we touched on bacon a little bit with the Power Bowl, but I'm talking about just having bacon as a standalone. For us, for my household, it's been a lifesaver uh, this one year on carnivore. If you get cravings, you eat bacon, the cravings will go away. Uh, if you need a snack, which is a little rare on carnivore, but it happens from time to time, you have bacon. If you have a purse, like I do, or my wife Jen does, you have bacon in your purse. If you're out on the road or you're going on a road trip, what is better than bacon? Bacon is so versatile too. It's like, you can wrap bacon around your burgers. Maybe you're getting sick of burger patties. Bill not shut out. You wrap some bacon around the burger patties. You can do so much with bacon. We made brats. I made homemade brats. I ground the meat up myself. It was pork. And I added bacon, crushed up bacon to the brats. I, I'm, it was one of the most fantastic brats I've ever eaten. Bacon will get you through the day. Anyone out there that's starting carnivore and like, I still got these cravings. Are you eating bacon? When you get those cravings, you have some bacon in the fridge you can go to and you can grab some. Do you have a big glass container of bacon ready to go in the fridge? Because you should. Okay, so that was number two. Number five was eggs. Number four was Power Bowl. Number three was ground beef. Number two was bacon. Number one, and you got to stay tuned for this bonus one because this has been a game changer. But number one, steak, a category on its own. Who doesn't love steak? Steak is a treat for most people, myself included. I don't have it every single day. I just want to say this about beef or steak in general. People are like, don't you get sick of eating beef? No, because there's so many different cuts of beef, so many different cuts of steak. And in my mind, legitimately, those are different foods and you can cook them differently. So my preferred cooking method, you guys may have seen it before on the channel, but those of you that are new here, it's very simple. This is the best way to cook a steak and I've cooked hundreds of steaks, low and slow and then hot and fast. That's it. And you could do that a million different ways. I do low and slow in my smoker over cherry smoke. My favorite is a ribeye. I will cook the ribeye low and slow, 225 degrees over cherry smoke. You get that nice, delicious smoke flavored. The steak cooks slowly, so it's cooked evenly throughout. You cook steak, you just, you know, you throw it on a propane grill, you get your, your gray on the edges and your medium rare on the inside, and it's not the same consistency, and it doesn't taste good. You cook it low and slow. So I do that on the smoker, and then my favorite is finishing it on the charcoal grill hot and fast like two minutes on each side, searing hot, 500 degrees if I can get that charcoal grill up to it. Now, some of you are saying, I don't have a smoker, I don't have a charcoal grill. It doesn't matter, I've done this every way. You can do low and slow, hot and fast, a million different ways with anything. Another way I did it, shout out when uh, we filmed Bill Knott for the documentary, Emma and my daughter and I were out in Alaska. We did it, we got some big porterhouse steaks. I did them low and slow in the oven. Who doesn't have an oven, right? I put the oven on the lowest temperature. I let it go low for like, I, they were really thick steaks. I think maybe a half hour. It gets this kind of gray. It looks gray. It looks kind of gross, to be honest with you. Then we took it outside over our campfire and we seared that baby hot and fast over the fire. One of the best steaks I've ever eaten. Winter time in Wisconsin, I don't like to go outside and use the smoker all the time. So I'll do it inside. I have cooked ribeye, New York strip steaks, you name the steak, low and slow in the air fryer. I'll put the air fryer on the lowest setting. Cook it low and slow. You, it gets gray. You could do it in the oven. You could do it in the air fryer. You could do it in a sous vide machine. There's a million ways to do it. And then I'll cook it hot and fast, cast iron skillet in some beef tallow. Wagyu beef tallow is fantastic. But you get that cast iron skillet searing hot. You cook it low and slow in the air fryer, in the oven, over your smoker, and you sear it. It is fantastic. Add a little bit of butter on the end. Who doesn't love steak? You could cook steak a million different ways is my point. Steak has gotten me through carnivore. If you're starting carnivore, my advice for you is those first 30 days, you're committing to 30 days, right? The first 30 days are the toughest. You have a budget allocated for those 30 days. You have a plan in your head because you're smart and you're preparing. Allocate some of that budget early on to some really good steaks. What's your favorite steak? Me, it's a ribeye. I prioritize, I'm gonna have a couple ribeyes that first week because carnivore is hard. I'm addicted to sugar, I'm addicted to the standard American diet. I've gotta overcome that on carnivore. It's gonna be hard the first week, so why not treat myself and make it easier and have these things to look forward to. One of the best steaks I cooked on carnivore, 
Shout out, uh, Butcher Box. Look at that. Would you look? Look at that. Today's video is brought to you by Butcher Box. Butcher Box. All right, Emma, are you ready for the moment of truth? Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, it's juicy and perfect. Vegan me would have never have thought that I'd be doing this ever again. And I advocate for buying locally raised, grass-fed, grass-finished beef if you can afford it. If you can't afford it, all you can afford is bologna and hot dogs. For me, I would be eating bologna and hot dogs before I'd be eating the standard American diet. For me, bologna and hot dogs is a million times better than the standard American diet. Now, if you can only afford the cheapest steak you can find on sale at the grocery store, I would eat that a million times more than I'd eat the standard American diet. But if you can afford it, my recommendation is get grass-fed, grass-finished, local. Support your local farmer. I get thousands of questions from people that say, I don't have a farmer down the road for me. Where can I get my meat from? For that, I recommend ButcherBox. Why do I recommend them? Number one, I've eaten their meat many, many times. I love it. It tastes fantastic. Number two, it's grass-fed, grass-finished. That's the best you can get. Number three, responsibly, humanely raised meat. You can check on their website. They go through all of these things. They treat their animals well. This isn't some big feedlot like you could get at the grocery store. I don't want to participate in something where the animal is in some big factory farm situation, unsanitary, unhealthy, inhumane situation. Uh, Butcher Box is awesome. They'll deliver right to your door. It's so easy. You go on their website. You can pick, put together a box or whatever you want, and it just keeps coming to your door. It's packed in dry ice. It's fantastic. My bonus for you. Thank you for staying till the end. I mentioned in the beginning, I'm going to show you a bonus. This is the bonus. This has been a game changer for me and the family. Two to three times a week we do this now. Beef stew meat. Oh, that's so simple. What are you talking about? Costco, a lot of grocery stores. You could buy meat and chop it up into stew meat yourself, but just for convenience, uh, I buy it from Costco. It comes in a package. It's like 25, 30 bucks. It's a huge package of beef stew meat. That's what it says on it. It says stew meat. Chunks of meat, they're like this big. I take those before I go to bed at night. I take out the slow cooker. I put them in the slow cooker. I put a little bit of water in, not enough to cover the meat. I like to cover half the meat, half the meat sticking up. Sprinkle a little salt on I throw a stick of butter in. That's it. This is some of the best beef I've ever eaten. It sounds crazy. Like, what? You're talking about ribeyes and steaks. This is better than ribeyes and steaks. It's very close. It's very, it depends on the day, whatever, but... I made this for Easter. We had like 30 people uh, at Easter. Most of them were not carnivores like me. One of them said to me ahead of time, why are you making that slow cooked beef? You're not gonna have any onions, you're not gonna have any garlic, you're not gonna have any spices, it's gonna be blah. Your non-carnivores are gonna be disgusted by it. They're not gonna like it. That person was wrong. In fact, my beef stew that I brought to Easter was the hit of Easter. I literally had four or five different individuals come up to me separately and say, I gotta get that recipe. Like what was in that meat? People were asking to take it home with them. I was like, whoa, here, you don't even need a pencil. It's meat, salt, and water. And then I put a little bit of butter in at the end. It's that simple. When you slow cook meat like that and you just let that flavor come out slowly throughout the night, a little bit of butter, a little bit of salt, it's one of the most incredible tastes in the world. It is so good and it is so simple. It's cheaper than steak. I can get a whole thing of beef stew meat almost for the cost of a large steak and that'll feed my family. And it's so convenient. So I do that at night. I put my beef stew in. We do this two or three times a week and maybe even more than that lately. I buy a whole, I stock up on this stuff. If I go to Costco or if I can get it from my neighbor, wherever I can get stew meat, stock up on it. Slow cooker overnight before going to bed. It literally takes me two minutes. You put it in the slow cooker, you put water and a little bit of salt. You put it on low and you let that puppy go all night, 12 hours, whatever it may be. Now I wake up in the morning. A lot of times, like I said, we'll have a power bowl or we'll have scrambled eggs and ground beef. Or sometimes I'll have scrambled eggs. I'll have the beef stew in a separate little bowl. Sounds weird, like you're eating beef stew with eggs. I'll tell you what, it is absolutely incredible. My triplets, Lily, Jen, it's Jen's favorite meal. Jen's been doing carnivore now for a couple of weeks. She's doing absolutely amazing. This is this is her favorite meal. She doesn't like the texture of steak. A lot of people have a meat aversion and the texture of a steak, especially you know if you grill it, whatever, there's, you're gonna have that little bite. Even if it's a nice tender steak, you're gonna have a little chew and a little bite. Some people, they can't stand that. Especially my wife, Jen, she was vegetarian her entire life before doing this. The slow cooked meat, she loves it. She absolutely loves it. The texture doesn't bother her. And you're getting fat in there too. So I put butter in it, but then when I make my individual bowl, I'll take another thing of my Kerrygold butter, psh, another pad, stick it in there, sprinkle on my um, Malden sea salt, nice flaky sea salt on it. Let it sit for like a half an hour, or, um, not a half an hour, let it sit for like five minutes before you eat it. Out of that slow cooker, even if it's on low, it's gonna be really hot. You let it rest for a little bit. 
Oh my goodness. It is so good. And the last thing I'll say on this is you get this broth afterwards. Absolutely incredible. I should call it the power broth. It's like the power bowl. You sip that broth down and you feel superhuman. You feel like a next level human. It's absolutely incredible. So those are my six carnivore go-to meals that have got me through carnivore. I eat everything on carnivore though. I'm not saying that's all I eat. I'm just saying those are my favorite go-to most prevalent meals I eat often that have really helped me get through carnivore. I eat chicken. I eat fish. I eat shrimp. Very rarely. I have turkey. I have other animal products. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with those. Um, but these are the ones that have really helped me get through carnivore, the hard days, whatever. Eggs I eat almost every single day. Power Bowl, oh my goodness. I don't know how many times Emma's like, we got to do a Power Bowl. We'll do a big, huge batch of it. Cravings. We'll have Power Bowl at night. Sometimes we'll be like, we're hungry. Let's go. What do we do? Need anything earlier today? Let's have a Power Bowl. Bacon, ground beef. Like I said, the last couple months, almost every single day. I got a special pan that cooks the ground beef. That's my ground beef pan. I got my egg pan, my ground beef pan. But I have ground beef almost every single day with my scrambled eggs. Scrambled eggs, ground beef is a game changer. Steak, low and slow, hot and fast. And then the last one I just mentioned was slow cooking meat. And you don't have to just do this with beef stew meat. You can get roast, you can do whatever. You can get all sorts of cuts of meat and slow cook them. It changes things. It makes it absolutely incredible. So if you're embarking on your carnivore diet journey, you're just starting, maybe you're into it, maybe you're having some roadblocks or some, some issues, consider these six go-to meals. They've really helped me. Um, the bacon, especially if you get any cravings, the bacon should definitely help you. If you enjoyed this video, you want to learn more, where can you get your meat, meat from? Please visit ButcherBox. We have a really special offer for you right now. The uh, link is in the description below with a special link that gets you a special offer. You have to check that out. Uh, thank you so much to ButcherBox for supporting the channel. And if you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about how to cook the best steak, I have cooked steak every which way possible. Slow and slow, hot and fast, slow cooked, charcoal grill, propane grill. I've tried it all. I'll tell you what, I know what I'm talking about here. You're going to want to watch this video right here in the upper corner next. It's a real quick video, but it's going to show you how to cook the perfect mouth-watering, delicious steak. I think it's going to inspire you. I think it's going to get you fired up as well. Beep.